Hey guys, welcome back to Al Dubs Investing. If you're new, welcome to the channel. If you're not, thanks for dropping back in, guys. In this video, we're talking cryptocurrency, guys. We're talking about what's happening with Bitcoin. We're talking about all the hype over Doge. If you can see on the front screen here, looks like everything's down except for Doge, guys. We're also talking about England and then looking at looking at a stable coin, guys. More, much more. Stay tuned. <music> All right, guys, if you enjoy this content, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget about the affiliate links in the description. It really helps out the channel, guys. Let's get into it. All right, guys, having a look at the market, looks like we are most definitely having a correction, guys. We've got some cryptos in the deep, dark red, custard, uh, guys, looking at, you know, somewhere between 15, 16, 17, 20%, guys, depending on some of the altcoins. Obviously, Ethereum at present is holding strong at support at 2000. And Bitcoin obviously has just fallen above, below support of the 60,000 guys. And obviously, at 54,000 guys, please be aware that Bitcoin just dropped underneath its 50 day average, guys. Very scary. But obviously, stay safe out there, guys. As you can see, Bitcoin's dominance as is at 53.28%, guys. So please make sure you keep an eye on that one. And as you can see, Doge, nothing can stop Doge, guys. 11.85% up, guys. Let's get into it. All right, straight into it, guys. UK government established Central Bank Digital Currency Task Force, guys. The United Kingdom is the latest country to begin exploring the possibilities of creating a central backed digital currency. Bank of England has begun preliminary central bank digital currency studies that could result in the creation of a national digital currency. In the document published by the Treasury, the announcement they created of a CBDC task force is collaborated with the United Kingdom Central Bank. According to the terms of the reference documents, the task force will synthesize the efforts of all relevant statutory bodies in the UK regarding CBDC development, guys. As part of its duties, the task force will explore preliminary issues associated with the design, implementation, and operational of a CBDC in the UK. The task force will also interface with stakeholders across many countries, including the fin including fintech companies, guys, and other relevant industries to identify the technology hurdles involved in creating solvent digital currencies, guys. The joint task force will also monitor CBDCs related to developments on the international scene, especially, especially as other nations are actively exploring their own central bank digital currency. It will also run its own internal CBDC unit headed by Cunlife. The, the establishment of the task force is yet another indication of the UK's government focus on digital currencies and fintech in the aftermath of Brexit. Brexit offered an opportunity for the UK to revamp its financial services sector, guys. As it also has identified that stablecoin regulations are the major focus of the government's area of cryptocurrency regulations, guys. So obviously, as you are aware, you've got China, you've got other countries that are looking into sta uh, a digital currency or a stablecoin, so to speak. Uh, and this is just great for the whole industry, guys. According to a report, the UK financial market focus is also extended towards a distributed ledger technology firms. Speaking during a financial industry conference on Monday, announced that the government plans to establish a fintech sandbox for blockchain startups, guys. So obviously, this is big news for the UK, guys. Obviously, you know, it's something to have a look at, something to keep an eye on, and, you know, it's all about being obviously transparent, guys, and obviously being out there and obviously, um, you know, finding what cryptocurrency can do for everyone. Let's get into the next one. All right, SEC loses a battle to win the war. Ripple dissociates from pumping XRP, guys. So obviously there might be a few XRP fans out there. Look, full disclosure, I own XRP token. It is one of my bigger holdings. And obviously I definitely see a future in this one, guys. While the defendants may have gained an edge in pre-trial rulings in the SEC v Ripple Labs, are Ripple's legal troubles now over, guys? 
Well, the United States Security and Exchange Commission filed legal action against Ripple Labs in the two top executives in December, alleging that XRP coin was in fact a security and that the firm had raised over $1.38 billion through an unregistered security offering in 2013. Many wonder if XRP would even survive. Some exchanges even delisted XRP, guys. Obviously, if you're on Twitter, guys, there's a lot of XRP people out there um, hashtagging relist XRP. And obviously, I think it is a bit of a movement, which obviously I think is a great idea as you know an owner of the token. But obviously, each to their own, guys. Some asset managers sold their XRP tokens. XRP had lost its place as a top three currency by market capitalization and was even looking like it could drop from the top 10. But reports from Ripple demise were speculatively exaggerated, guys. As of mid-April, XRP had increased 532% over the previous 12 months. And things also took a favorable turn recently in the SEC lawsuit, with the defendants prevailing in two discovery rulings, even turning the tables on the regulatory agency by winning access to the SEC's internal memos and minutes with regarding to crypto discussions, guys. The SEC is not on trial, and now it is from Forbes. But the lawsuit continues. Indeed, it is being closely watched and had the potential to set legal precedents in a number of areas. Partner in fintech and blockchain practice at law firm told Cointelegraph, including, quote, the application of the status of limitations to token sales, the extraterrestrial reach of the security laws to token sales on worldwide blockchains, the application of the securities law to digital assets that FinCEN has regulated as a virtual currency, e.g. BTC, and whether courts will use Bitcoin and Ether as models of non-security digital assets in their analysis. A lot to go through, guys. Ripple executive Garley House and Larson made a plausible argument that the SEC was overreaching with its request for eight years of their personal bank records. As the insiders argued, why does the SEC need to know household expenditure in order to make its case, guys? You know, obviously, there's a lot more looking into it, guys. You know, if you want to get the full article here, it's on Coin Telegraph. A lot to read through, guys. But obviously, let's get on to the next one. So guys, China endorses BTC investment. Five things to watch in Bitcoin this week, guys. Obviously, if you weren't aware, China has just recently, over the last few days, there's been a bit of power issues. Um, a lot of the Bitcoin mining obviously does happen out of China, and obviously it has uh, affected the prices, guys. Bitcoin is beginning a new week, grinding back from 60,000 as the stock of the weekend crashed settles. Well, actually, it didn't quite settle, guys. Obviously, we have continued with that. After dropping as low as 52000 in a snap sell-off event, Bitcoin has spent the past two days slowly recovering its losses. And what's next, guys? As such, little impact on Bitcoin is to be expected from equity moves. These forecasts to continue building record highs in the next coming weeks, guys. So obviously, a lot of people think that the stock market and crypto markets are correlated. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. It just depends on what chart you're looking at. Um, you know, I feel equities are equity sometimes. And obviously, when, when there's bad sentiment in the entire market, everything gets sold. Everyone gets scared, guys. So, you know, that's just my opinion on the matter, guys. Our current view is that with short-term interest rates set to remain low for the medium term and our expenditure that the earnings will continue to increase, it is unlikely that the increase in long-term interest rates will trigger an equity market sell-off, guys. So obviously what, we're, what they're saying here, guys, is obviously there's a lot of money in the market. The Fed is pumping up everything, not letting anything fall. And they feel like that, um, you know, isn't, there's no really going down if, the, if we're being backed by the Fed, guys. So Bitcoin recovers from crash to 52,000, guys. In Bitcoin cycles, the main taking profit naturally remains the weekend's events, which such a sudden cascade of selling, which sent BTC down 7,000 in a matter of minutes, guys, Bouncing to just about 52,000, the crash, several similar events this year, and Bitcoin managed to regain around 50% lost ground within a few hours, guys. So obviously, guys, if you were able to pick up that dip down to just under 52,000, well done, guys. Obviously, we're, sim we're simmering around that 
price point at the present moment, guys. Who knows what we're going to do, whether we're going to have support at 50,000 or whether we're going to drop down to the 200-day moving average, which is sitting around about that 40,000 mark, guys. But, you know, who knows? This is cryptocurrency. You know, we'll, we'll wake up to different prices tomorrow, guys. We just saw the single largest one-day drop in mining hash rate since November 2017. The hash rate on the network essentially halved, causing mayhem in BTC prices as it crashed, guys. So obviously, we covered it over a few days ago in the video. Please make sure you go and check that one out, guys. In simple terms, profit-taking by long-term investors is completing. Very little sell power left unless investors want to sell at a loss from their entry price, unlikely in a bull market, guys. So obviously, if you look here through the fundamentals, if you want to get involved, why don't you check out Willy Woo, guys. He's definitely one to follow and have a look at what he's talking about there, guys. This liquid supply increase is not only just dip buyers with no history of selling but partially accumulation from five to six months ago, of which those wallets had just crossed the liquidated threshold for the metric guys. So obviously the institutions are buying, they're not looking at selling. I'm not looking at selling guys, I'm looking to accumulate, not financial advice guys, but it's just what I'm doing guys. Look, once again, if you wanna go through this entire article, there's a lot here. China is playing 40 chess, the last three days have made very clear that they are dominating global mining slowly, slowly, then all at once, guys. So obviously, you know, I don't see a major, major concern with what's happening in China. Obviously, someone had to be the leader in the mining. It so happens to be China, guys. But obviously, I don't feel that's something to crazy worry about. Just keep hodling there, guys. Let's get on to the next one. So guys, if you're liking this content, please don't forget to like, sub, share, and subscribe. Once again, guys, please don't forget to hit a comment in the bottom there, guys. And do not forget, if you want some free Bitcoin, guys, don't forget to hit the links in the description to Coinbase. Please make sure you uh, sign up with the referral link to CoinSpot to get yourself a referral. And if you want a free stock, please don't forget to use the stake referral in the description. It really helps out the channel, guys. Let's get into it. All right, guys, having a look at my smaller portfolio here, guys, it looks like I have taken a massive drop down, as most people would have, guys. As you can see here, I was on the way to 125,000. Now I'm back down to 94. Thousand guys, this is one of the biggest drops we've had in quite a long time, guys. Like I said, I'm not too worried. I'm looking at buying the dip, guys. I'm looking at putting some money in and seeing where it takes me. Not financial advice, guys. This is just what I'm doing here, guys. As you can see, the portfolio is still holding 16% XRP, 15% Cardano, 12% BTC, and 57% altcoins, guys. Like I said, this is a very much altcoin-heavy portfolio. I do have another portfolio, but let me know in the description if you wanted to check that out. It is a much more bigger portfolio, but obviously, I'm wanting to concentrate on this first, guys. So obviously, let's come and have a look down here, guys. We can have a look down the bottom and have a look. The biggest movies from the day, we've still got some altcoins going. Here is Dogecoin again, guys. What can stop Dogecoin, guys? No one really knows. Sitting at 10.7% up. And obviously, we've got a few coins taking a quite a hefty beating over here. Some as much as nearly 31% down, guys. So obviously, make sure you stay safe out there, guys. And make sure I see you in the next one.